Another week of Beyond the Final Whistle with myself, Sanani Mangisa. We all smiles this week. A lot of us are eating humble bar. I never thought the box would do it. The only person to have called it that I know of on Twitter is Prince Gore. He said box by two and it was actually box by two. Give me the whole humble pie, I will have all of it. I did not see the Springbok win coming at all. I don't think any of you guys saw it. Go, you, you were going on history. You you were just throwing it out there. It was a Hail Mary play. It was, it was. <laughs> pity you didn't bet on your Hail yeah, Mary play. Big pity. But guys, here we are. Uh, Springboks beat New Zealand in Wellington by two. Yeah. Reaction time. Jeez, I mean, as you say, I think three words that come is defense, defense, defense. And I mean, well done to the guys. Full credit to Sia and his team. I think they played really well. And I mean, it was a game where they really played for each other. So I'm super happy for them. And I'm sure, as everyone has been saying, there's a lot of confidence they can take from this game going into the future. Sisa, all, all the stats, <laughs> besides the score, are against the, bo the box. Every single one. Tackles, passes. Take, if you look at the stats, they should never have won that game. Yeah, um, on that last statement, the box had no right to win that game. Yeah. All the stats were heavily in favour mm. of um, the New Zealand, from tackles to territory to possession. Every single stat uh, out of that game was for New Zealand. And it, it, it just shows you, you know, uh, rugby is still an old-fashioned game, won, won by the team with, a, with uh, you know, with the most passion on, mm. uh, on the day. The ball bounced for South Africa and, and, and we won by two points. I think that's what I tweeted after the game, is that the frustration from last weekend was that we know on any given day, not that they can, or you can turn the page and play a better game plan, just the, the effort and the passion that was this weekend versus the Australian game. Like, I, I have a different take, like, like to, to tell what you're saying, the box were worth every penny of the win. You know, I, I, I don't care about the stats, how bad the stats were. I mean, if you look at that game, how it started, we were 12-0 down, and it was like England all over again. Yeah. The team was in a comfortable place and then they just started playing. And for 30 minutes of that match, the box outplayed the All Blacks. Mm -hmm. They scored more points on the All Blacks and they put the All Blacks under pressure in a lot of phases. So, so the box were worth it. Obviously, the, 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 the All Blacks are the home team. They had to come back and that's the, the defensive effort. But I, I, I don't care if people say that Barrett missed a lot of things and Britannic wasn't there. The box and everything that they got over the weekend because of the way they played, the passion that they showed. And they were better than the All Blacks on the day. For a, for a defensive unit that we've criticised, that period where Vili got the yellow card, which is still a questionable yellow card, but they did, we didn't concede any points during that period. And, and I think that's kudos to you know, a, a very good defensive units this weekend. I think even throughout the game, the way they were defending was a whole lot better than they've defended most other games. Yeah. So they've clearly did their homework around um, how to defend against All Blacks. Because if you saw at, at right time, we didn't really commit a lot of people. We fanned out pretty well. And the guys, uh, what they did is that they rushed them up. And at certain times, we hit them offensively. I mean, there was a big hit that Uu Lukanyo Am had on uh, Antelina Brown. There was also another big one that I think Jesse Creel had on... Um, um, Jordy Barrett, but it's that kind of um, offensive tackling that really breaks the team's rhythm, that makes them hard to actually do their thing. So the rush defense didn't really work for us, and I think again we were playing the, the call it the outside in defense. It didn't really it did work this weekend. I think the, the tries that they did score on the outside wasn't a matter of we ran out of tacklers on the outside based on the inside um, outside in kind of defense, but more of a sense of through the recycling of the ball, they've actually created enough space out wide to score those tries. Tisa, I don't know if you've got a direct line to Rusty, but your changes last week were pretty close to what he had. Yeah. You know, um, it's about going back to basics, you know. Uh, Utuma just said something now that, that actually jogged my memory. Um, against England, we, we were behind, you know. The guys dug deep and they went back to, to their traditional strengths yeah. and they came back and won that game, right? Um, same same thing against England. I'm uh, sorry, uh, uh, against New Zealand. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a team to me that's 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 showing me a bit of themselves week in week out. That that they they're a bit temperamental, but when the chips are against them, and they there is an occasion to play for that 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 they can come to the fore. You know, um, this this was a big occasion. This this for this team was 
was uh, prominent, if, if I can put it that way. Um, and they and they came to the fore. They 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 pitched up on defense. They pitched up at the right time. Uh, they you know everything about this 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 game showed their their attitude. You know, and 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 I was really really pleased. Do you want to? But Barrett is still holding his neck from <laughs> last last scene holding his neck from the Rapiwe sidestep. Rapiwe judge, you have said it on this show, is is a weapon of mass destruction. He is a beast. I mean, uh, what he did, he, did, he had no right to score the try, but his talent and his skill shone through. Uh, Barrett was probably expecting to push him out, but Apiwe went inside, outside. In a flash, yeah, I think it was like that cartoon character, the Flash. <laughs> what he did there—that is—that that is why you pick an Apiwe Jaji in the team. I mean, most of the time the Springboks they say he's not ready. Just that one year of Super Rugby, you should have waited. But this is why you pick him because there's no better finisher than Apiwe Jaji in World Rugby right now, and and it's paid off. That's yeah. I think we got talking, comment. talking yeah. a period just yeah, a comment. I think apparently I've heard that he's trending on white chick Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he's on the radio. <laughs> he's got that uh, the cricket is like contract. Yeah, it's coming. Another contract. Jens, I think Sia's leadership as well must be commended. Um, we we spoke about it last week in terms of who the real leader on the team is. I think he had a good game. He played well and. The guys just fed off that as well. I yeah, agree with you. And I heard a comment uh, just put over the weekend, as in when they're motivating each other, what was really part of the big mantra. And one of the things they were saying is that every guy who takes on the field they must be able to get off, look at the next man and say, I'm proud of you. Yeah. And I think that really came through on the day. And talking about Sia leading from the front, I mean, as the game started, Sia was really present. He was making a lot of tackles and he was really giving the guys a hard time. So definitely great leadership from Sia's side and actually keeping the guys calm again when they're 12 nil down and really actually building the belief as they went along. So, I mean, great kudos to see. I mean, he's really done something really big here. I mean, he's beaten the All Blacks uh, in New Zealand. He scored the most points uh, any Springbok captain's ever done against the All Blacks. And I stand on record, but I think he's the only one to get a bonus point away in New Zealand. So, I mean, a lot that Sia's done over the weekend. Well done, Sia. Hey, guys, we're going to have to bring it back because as much as it was a good performance, we know what can happen to Loftus and we still got PE. So there were still some areas of concern and we're going to chat about those now but without getting carried away because as a nation we can get carried away. I think the box need to just bring it back. They have a few days off I think now and they regroup again about Thursday, Friday and then draw it back to the drawing board essentially. Yeah, um, and I think this this week off is going to be good for them, just just for them to to be at home, you know, and 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 be with family. Again, this is a very temperamental team for me at the moment, you know, yeah. because the evidence for me shows that you know they 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 up and down, um, you, you know, things things can happen for them um, in the on any given Saturday, if I can put it that way. But now they're at home, right? They know what they have to do. It's not in their hands anymore. You know, New Zealand have to win their games. We have to win ours. If if New Zealand um, loses one game um, over the next two uh, or three weeks, um, we they they open a door for us. So the guys know exactly what what needs to happen. Um, they, they and we still have to beat Australia. Guys. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and for me, that's 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 the statement game. That um, luckily we're playing them first. first yeah. That's the statement game and confidence builder that that will launch us into into Loftus. The thing is, guys, uh, what we've seen in the last couple of months with the box, they've been a Jekyll and Hyde team. And and the Jekyll is we saw over the last couple of the, the, the last game. And then the last game, three games against New Zealand, sorry, against Australia and Argentina, we saw the bad parts. Mm -hmm. And and this weekend's game, the good overshadowed the bad. I mean the bad was still there. Mm -hmm. We saw the defensive problems that we got with this inside-out defense that Gore was mentioning. I think something has to give with the way we defend as 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 a, as a test team because that this is what's causing. I mean, just imagine going to New Zealand and scoring five tries and scoring thirty-six points, but still concede another six tries and still win a game. Yeah. And 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 that that's the stat line I looked at. It's like who scores five tries? against the All Blacks in New Zealand and still, you, you, I mean, we got outscored six to five tries, but we still won. We still defended enough to win the game. Yeah. But but that's that's another thing. If, if 
you don't you don't score five tries and lose a game like that. That's another thing. We have to defend better, even against and and, and we have to play well with the lead because it looks like the Springboks cannot play with the lead. We have to come from behind and beat teams. We don't stop well, yeah. So so the, the game management within the team, we need to manage games properly. We know what to do when we've got a lead, uh, territory and all of those things. That's still the the, the bad with with the box. Guys, is there any merit in this? Uh Elton and Pollard combination that people saw in the last, call it, 10, 15 minutes over the weekend? Yeah, look, I must say I've, I've been pretty anti the, the uh, Pollard and uh, Elton Yankees combo based on the fact that, I mean, I thought we do have enough firepower at, um, on the 12th position. I mean, my preferred 12 is still Jan Serfentek, so I mean, he's still uh, recovering from injury. But in the interim, I think in the little touch that I saw, I think Elton and Andre really uh, combined really well. And I think the, the X factor that, that Elton did really bring, I mean, it was, it was a game where he actually really stood up in attack and also he stood up in defense. So to me, he's, he, this was probably the best game he's had over the past uh, couple of games he's played from the box. I mean, it's great for them. And probably what it does do for Rassi is give him selection headaches in terms of what he'll do going forward. Because I don't think people will be close to the idea of having Elton and, and, and uh, Henry playing off each other. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was very interesting, you know. Um, in you know, in the past few weeks, they, you've been getting a feeling that that they've been trying to outdo each other. Every time one comes on, he's trying to outdo the other, and he's trying to do too much, and then mistakes happen. You know, um, Henry, I've never seen Henry kick kick this poorly um, in his career ever. But for me, on when when Elton came on and Henry was a twelve, it was for the first time where I, I saw the anxiety sort of dis, um, dissolve, and the guys just played their game. You know, Elton. Was attacking the line. He gave a pass to 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 uh, France. France was one of the best. I, mean, I, I haven't seen Elton do that in a um, in a in a green and gold jersey, you know. But this time, I saw him do it in New Zealand under pressure. Yeah. You know, defense was in his face, and he and he and he executed. So so for me, it's very exciting to see um, a, a a budgeting com uh, combination like that. Um, and and maybe you never know. We we could see it next year in uh, Japan. He, he looks like Lions Elton. Yes. yes. The ones that we see, the, the Elton judges we see week in, week out for the Lions, who's confident to go in to run straight exactly. and create the pass. I mean, uh, look, uh, it was unfortunate how he entered the game because uh, Delande uh, injured, yeah. injured. And he came on and uh, Henry Pollard had to move to the 12. And Henry Pollard tackled very well as well mm -hmm. when he came on. Because I think what happened during that game is that everybody, the, the longer the game got on, Everybody got more motivated, and and because of how we sort of changed the game, and and whatever happens now will be beneficial for the box because we we are in the same group with the All Blacks in the World Cup. Yes. So I mean, All Blacks are going to go, yeah. yeah, they'll go in knowing that we can beat them. Hopefully, we won't have to wait another ten years to beat them in New Zealand. Uh, to yeah. I'm not getting carried away. Yeah. <laughs> but they've got we've got a week to rest. Um, the guys have. Go, as I say, go back to the drawboard, work out combinations over the week, and then Australia and PE. They need a win. They got beaten by Argentina. They'll probably be come, coming out guns blazing. Yeah, I mean, they'll definitely come out guns blazing, but I mean, as we said last week, on paper, that Australian team is not up to the standard of the South African team on paper. So we should actually be able to beat them um, in Port Elizabeth. I mean, the ideal situation is to beat them with a bonus point, and I think we do have the ability to do that. I mean, we have the ability to beat them in, in Australia. We didn't. We played really uh, below ourselves, so we didn't play well. And I mean, I'm sure, again, coming off this week, but even what we've seen the guys do in the England series, we go into that game against Australia as favourites to take them. So, I mean, I think we should be able to get at least a four points there, ideally five. Ah, uh, but Chibitra, you're putting it nicely. We <laughs> should be smashing Australia. That, that team is, I said it last week, it's the worst Australian team I've seen in 15 years. There was a bunch of, who, who, who scares you? It's only Bill that scares me, that team. We should be putting 50 points on Australian PE. End of story. I mean, we can't be going and say, uh, we should be. The Springboks, with the kind of firepower that we have within our forwards and backs, we should put 50 points on Australia and make sure they don't score anything. Because that's how bad that team is. It's an awful team. We can't be saying, uh, hopefully, we bonus points try. No, we double bonus point on that <laughs> No, that, that game in Port Elizabeth for the Springboks is a statement game, you know? Yeah. It's a statement game to launch them into Loftus 
um, because I have a feeling that that game in Loftus is going to be even more intense than than uh, the game we just saw this weekend. Yes, Honestly, uh, all black backlash. Yes, to come. Yeah, they're, they're going to come back. But, but the All Blacks know that we hit harder than most teams. I think mm -hmm. that's one people people don't know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Springboks subconsciously we're still suffering from that fifty point smashing we took last year. Last year. So, but that was like a, I don't know what team was there last year. I don't know what Springbok team was there. But the, physically, the Springboks hit harder, which is why the All Blacks felt the hits during the, during the game. And in Loftus, we're gonna get a backlash, but I think we still got a good enough chance to win if we keep our heads and we play, we manage the game correctly. So, also, I don't think we should have a problem in the last two weeks. Yeah, right, guys. As you heard from the gents, two more weeks of the Rugby Championship, all to play for by the Springboks. Follow us at Grid Sports, join in the conversation and hashtag Beyond the Final Whistle.